in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We we'll give God great praise. You may be seated. Uh, I'll be done in a very short time. I know that um, this particular week has been emotionally tasking for everyone. Uh, and my love goes to everyone that is here, her parents, our great fathers in the house, mothers in the house, all of you, God bless you. Thank you so much um, for being here. Everyone that has come here, Pastor Chris, I salute God bless you. We want to honor all of you that has come tonight. We give God praise for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when spirit beings are calculating things, they do not calculate long life the way you and I calculate long life. The way we calculate long life is a person lived to 70, the person lived to 100, the person lived to 200. That's the counting system of men. But the counting system of spirits, they don't count long life like that. They count long life based on impact. What your life is doing. As a matter of fact, those moments when you are not living for Jesus, they don't count it as you being alive. I know because the Bible tells us that that woman that is alive but is living in pleasure, the Bible said that she's dead while she's living. So any moment of time you're living for yourself, heaven records it as you are dead. So what it means is that long life is counted by spirits based on impact, not based on years. You can live for 200 years, but spirits look at it that you died young. But somebody lived 30 years, and the spirit look at it like this person lived a long life. So look at Jesus as he lived long. Why? Because he lived a life of impact. Hallelujah. Contrary to popular opinion, life does not end with death. And contrary to popular opinion, life does not begin with birth. These things I've mentioned, death and life, they are just two parts in a five-stage series of every man. So when, a person, when we say a person is dead, that is you. That doesn't mean that the person's life has ended. It just simply means that the person is still alive but in another dimension. So what God did, how God arranged life is that every single entity has five stages. I'm just going to tell you about those five stages. If you don't understand those five stages, you will not live an intelligent life. I noted, I was doing a study of the scripture and I saw that there are seven people that Jesus called foolish people. So if you don't understand the five stages of life, you cannot live an intelligent life. Many people are not living intelligently. They may be making a lot of money. They may be known. They may have visibility. They may have popularity. They may have cars. All those great things. However, they are not living very intelligent lives. The only people that live intelligently on earth are those who understand the five stages. And that's just what I'm going to share in the next two, three minutes. And then I'll be done. The first stage of life is called the pre-birth phase or the spiritual phase, meaning that before you landed on planet Earth, you were alive. You were existing somewhere else before you landed here. So your life did not begin when you were born on planet Earth. That's just a second phase. The first phase is that you were alive. You had conversations with God before you came here. How do I know? Well, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 tells us, God was talking to Jeremiah and he said, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. Meaning what? There was a conversation between God and Jeremiah. Not just that there was a conversation, there was an ordination ceremony. He said, I ordained you to be a prophet in the nation. All of this was happening before Jeremiah was born. And it's not just because it is Jeremiah, it is the way of every human being. So before you came on planet Earth, you had phase one. What is phase one? The pre-birth phase, the spiritual phase. At that point, you were a spirit. You didn't have body, but you had a spirit. You had conversations with God. And in that your state, God put your purpose, the reason he's sending you on planet Earth. He wrote it in your spirit. He had a conversation with you, phase one. Phase two comes the phase of birth. That is one we are familiar with and that is one we say, oh, this person just came alive. No, you didn't just come alive. You've entered phase two. That second phase lasts for nine months. So you stay in your mom's uh, womb and then what they do in that phase is that they give you a body. That they give you hands, legs, all of that. But you were already in existence before then. That's phase two, right? And then you come to phase three, which is the phase of life, which is where we all are. 
Now, in this phase of life where you are, there is only one thing you are meant to do. You are meant to do and leave out that conversation you had with God at the beginning, before you came here. So there are some people like Reverend Favor, when, before she was born, God told her, you are coming to planet Earth. And this, and this, and this, and this are the things you are going to do. As a matter of fact, according to Job 14.5, the Bible says that the length of our lives have been determined before we came. Your death will not take God by surprise. The Bible said the length of your year, they are all determined. And they added one more sentence. They said a minute after that, you will not leave. You can't stay one second after. How long they give you is dependent on purpose. So they look at your purpose and they say, okay, it will take you three years to fulfill purpose. And that's what they give you. Once that three oh, years comes, the time, the time is, is, is over. over. And, and, and then they come and, 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 and give you an account, an account of how you have lived. lived. So, so what are you supposed to do here? And, and the intelligent person understands that death, death is not, is the, not end the end of life. Of life. So who so does he do? He spends life with the notion that one day I am going to go back and give an account. And when I give that account, if I am found wanting, I will be alive, but not with God. And if at the end of the day, I hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, I will still be alive, but I will be with God. So a wise person is thinking to himself, what are the things I need to do while I am on earth so that I can hear well done from the master? Everybody on earth can tell you well done. You bought a new car, they say well done. You buy a new wife, they say well done. But is Jesus saying well done? What is the marking scheme of Jesus? What does a person need to do to hear well done from the mouth of Jesus? That is what an intelligent person sits down and finds out. That at the end of the day, the person that will mark your script is not your pastor. The person that will mark your script is not even your father. The person that will mark your script at the end of the day is not your mother. Your pastor may not know you. You may, you may come here, celebrate, do all of those things. But one man will mark your script. So a wise person will sit down and say, how should I live so that I will please one person to two people? people. Who we'll 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 understand it? You have had every time what is called intelligent living. Anything else that means finished living. And that is what Reverend Fearful has, has done. done. She's she lived her life, life for Jesus. Jesus. And that, and that is why you notice something, something in the atmosphere. It is, it is called, called the presence of God. Of God. Not just, Not just anointing. The presence, the presence of, God of God is here. The Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit is here. Why? why? One, One woman, woman lived to honor his, his name. name. Guess what? One day it will be your turn. The whole, the whole world, world, the world, the world, the president can attend your song song. But when the Holy Spirit attended. attended. He doesn't go everywhere. There is the omnipotent presence of God. That's the omnipresence of God. In hell, the Holy Ghost is there. In the beer parlor, he's there. In the ritualist home, he's there. But there's something called the manifest presence. That is when God reveals the fullness of himself in a place. That is how you know a person that receives well done. The Holy Ghost, I know when he attends meeting, and if you're close to him, you will know that he's here. It is that signature saying you lived well. You lived intelligently. And they are not marking your script based on how many cars you had, how many clothes, all those external things. No, they are marking your script by a different set of rules. So if you lived like the world, you lived to please people, you had an external, those men will not mark your script. Only one man will count at the end of the day. So when life ends, we enter another phase. It's called the eternal phase. That is a phase of judgment. And that is a phase where they look at you, they say, give me an account. Did you live to please the world? Did you, did you, I mean, was your success about the success of the world? You know, because the world has defined success by a different set of standards. And then Jesus has a completely different set of standards for a successful life. Many of the people we call successful today, they don't have that word from Jesus saying you live successfully. 
So what does it mean to live intelligently? It means to live in such a way you receive well done. And how can you receive well done? It is by knowing the things that he values, which I'm going to tell you what it is. One word is called obedience to God. If you wake up every day and say, I want to obey you. Not obey every other person. Obey you. You live that way. When it is your turn, and I'm telling you, in the, before 100 years is over, if the Lord tarries, every single human being that can hear me, before 100 years is over, all of us would have left. We'll be talking about another generation. Every one of us. How many of us would the Holy Spirit attend our service of songs? It depends on how you lived. So stop living foolishly by living for yourself. Live knowing that one day you are going to stand before Jesus. You're going to give an account exactly how favor has lived her life. And she has stood before her master and he has asked her, give me an account. And she has given an account. And I believe she received a well done. Like I said, how do I know? He came. He came. <laughs> That's the biggest time. He came. He came to honor his own. May the Lord honor you when the time comes in the name of Jesus. Can you in the next few seconds just talk to the Father? Talk to the Lord about your life. Your life. Maybe you have an external that, oh, everybody thinks you're okay, but you know you are not okay. You know that you are sick. Everybody say you are doing well. They are healing you, but you know on the inside something is wrong. This is the time to say, Lord, show me mercy. Because the time is coming when mercy will be withdrawn. That is when you cross over to the last phase, which is a phase of judgment. So I want you to bow your head. Please, in the next few seconds, don't look at me. Just talk to your father and say, Lord, help me. If you are sick on the inside, there's a doctor in the house. His name is Jesus. All you need to do is say, Lord, I am truly sorry for how I have lived. I ask you to please forgive me. Help me that in the next few days, the next few months, the next few years, that I will live to please you. Thank you, Father. We give you great praise.